so today we'll see yeah. about uh, what is the usage of docker and why the docker is so famous in the market okay and what it provides mostly what it provides last class we discussed about the overview of docker and the architecture of docker so let me share my screen and uh, we'll discuss about more details one second okay so last class we saw about this docker registry docker daemon and registry so the docker registry is a repository of docker image which is used for creating the docker containers right and one can use local or private repository or use docker hub so we are going to use our docker hub as well as i'll show you the private registry is our s3 okay how we can store the images there also two ways i'll show you and the next thing is uh, the why the docker is so famous and why it uh, actually people are um, adopting docker and the way people are going uh, moving towards the containerization right see <clears throat> so far in the market right previously or so far in the market we have actually the monolithic architecture what is this monolithic so whatever the applications we are designing right the applications we are working actually uh, like you would have seen like one application uh, stack it will have ui is a user interface business logic and data access layer and the database it will be the same platform in the same machine and the same virtual machines it will be everything and it will be bundled together in one applications and it will be running so in this monolithic architecture if there is some problem with the database or some problem with the business logic the entire applications will be unaccessible inaccessible right it we cannot access the applications because everything will be broken so but in case of microservice architecture <coughs> so the containerization or docker and kubernetes they actually comes into the microservice architecture by using these technologies we can whatever applications we can put into the microservice architecture okay so what is this microservice architecture you can see here it is actually uh, self-explanatory if you see it here the ui will be one and we'll have multiple business logic business uh, 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 data access layer and databases so here what happens using the containerization platform or docker platform or container platform we can create three different containers which will having business logic data access layer and database separately so we segregate the entire stack entire application stack we'll put ui in one container we'll put business logic in different container we'll put data access in different container and we'll put database itself in a different container and we'll try to access all these so in this case what happens everything is separated though they are interlinked to access the database or to access the main functionality or component of the applications but they are independently running in different different containers okay suppose in one applications if we keep three database for that applications to connect suppose in this picture if one thing is down so the user interface the application the customers or the client will not affect it they can still have other containers to serve the applications right so the microservice architecture is in high demand in the market that's why people are hiring docker and kubernetes professionals who can convert their monolithic mm -hmm. architecture to microservice architecture mm -hmm. okay. so <clears throat> okay these things we had so, already so ranjit uh, yes please yeah yeah so uh, okay so it's like uh, are you keeping three copies of uh, the service actually uh yes three because, copies. Uh, uh, like okay uh see uh, where we had discussed uh, in case of c we had we had seen these things in a multi availability zone or kind of uh, disaster recovery preparedness 
uh, we had seen in our cloud uh-huh. classes, right? The same things, uh-huh. but we are keeping in a different containers. Three different, but okay. three different, con- these services are will be equal, but it will be in three different containers. These techniques will see uh, actually, yeah, three different containers are actually in Kubernetes. If we saw, if we see, this is, will be, this will be kept in three different pods. Three different pods. Mm. Those uh, don't, don't mm. uh, think about this pod and all. You'll get confused. So mm. what happens here? Yeah. In case any one of the container or pod is down, the other one will be there to serve the serve the purpose. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's why we are making it microservices. None of the uh, containers and none of the applications are in <clears throat> tagged. This is I. This is actually what the loose couple things. It is loose coupled. It is not tightly coupled, uh-huh. so that anything is not whole application will be broken. In case of loose coupled, if anything is broken, the, the other things will be there to handle the applications. That we'll discuss uh, very detailed in our Kubernetes classes. So after this Docker, after once we finish this Docker, we'll move into the Kubernetes. Okay. Now you'll be thinking like in the market, uh, people are still getting confused between the Docker and Kubernetes. Actually, when we learn the Kubernetes, we don't need any Docker commands to use in Kubernetes. But still, we should understand the basics of the docker of the container of the images and that we need to use when we create any ports or anything in the kubernetes that i'll explain later okay don't worry about that so next one so there also we are going to use also kubernetes sorry docker also uh, no that way we are not going to use docker uh, there we are going to use actually the concepts, the containers, the images, whatever we are seeing, right? The same terms, same mm-hmm. things will be there. But there will be few commands which <coughs> you may na- you may use to troubleshoot the things, like creating your own images, creating your own okay. image file. That you will need Docker to create the own image file. And those images you are going mm-hmm. to use in the Kubernetes. Okay. Kubernetes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the yeah, that's why yeah. If, if we go deeper into that, then it will be too vast uh, to understand the Kubernetes. Well, it is too co- Kubernetes. Yeah. So don't okay, do that okay. now. So. Ah yeah yeah. Now let's uh, try to install the applications. Okay. So I have one installation steps uh, created for you. So <clears throat> we can install Docker in Windows. We can install Mac OS or Linux. Uh, so what happens here for Windows uh, we can install docker desktop in Windows 10 uh, remember guys docker only provides <coughs> this docker desktop for Windows 10 not 7 Windows 10 and for professional enterprise and education version not home edition so normally whatever we have actually Windows 10 home edition that home edition, yes, home edition correct. so we cannot directly install the docker desktop we cannot directly install the docker desktop in the windows home editions instead we can install this pro professional enterprise and edu versions and the higher version with 64 configurations like windows 11 12 whatever it is coming to the market you can install it okay so here is the installations link i'll share this document with you and uh, if you have a older version of windows 10 like home editions there is also a link given here to follow and for that you need to install some different tools that is called tool uh, docker toolbox okay toolbox you have to install that toolbox with the uh, there is uh, one virtual platform you need to install that is called your virtual box oracle's virtual box that also you need to install okay let me show you something then uh, you can easily understand <coughs> yeah yeah this for and uh, and guys uh, remember this docker is entirely the unix commands you are going to use even though you install in uh, windows or uh, your linux machines all the commands whatever you is going you are going to use will be same for windows as well as unix environment okay so there is no different only the difference is the installation part okay only the differences in the installation mm-hmm. part. Okay. So Docker toolbox. Okay. 
so what it says okay now new message has come so like the docker toolbox has been deprecated and is no longer in active development please use docker desktop instead okay so docker desktop if you go for docker desktop for windows what it says uh, um, these are the options you need to select but the prerequisites okay it has not given uh, cpu memory okay there are few constraint actually um, related to the resources if you are if you are talking about the cpus it is required uh, docker desktop is set to use half the number of processors available on the host machine to increase the processing power suppose you have 4 gb of ram it will take more than 2 gb of ram itself the docker okay if you have 8 gb it will take more than 4 gb of ram, RAM or uh, sorry cpu sorry sir uh, CPU, suppose two uh, CPU, huh? If you have two core CPUs, ah, you, yeah. um, one core it will occur. You are automatically it will take one core. If you have four dual core, quadro core, or dual mm -hmm. core uh, CPU, it will take two core of CPUs for that. Similarly, for memory also, mm -hmm. what it says is by default it takes two GB runtime yeah. memory. Okay, so two GB to four GB runtime memory it takes. So that's why, guys, remember only Docker the things which you can run on your machines. Or whatever the things we are going to learn in the AWS, uh, like we are going to create a machine, right? Uh, in uh, EC2 instance, and then we are, I'm going to show you how to install this Docker, and then how to work it. Remember, this um, AWS instances where we are going to get it, it will be very limited. RAM will be there, right? Very under it will be one core or two cores of mm -hmm. you, and very limited memory uh, storage will be there. For that. We can mm. really work on the Docker, but when we'll go to the Kubernetes part, that will not work. For that, we need higher machines, four core or sorry, two core or minimum two core and minimum four GB RAM is required. Eight GB will be better because eight GB will good give you good performance. Okay, <clears throat> okay, uh, don't uh, discuss about Kubernetes now. And uh, all these informations are there, and you follow this link. Okay. You follow this link to install the docker so let me see install if you click on this install docker desktop and system requirement they have given actually what they says uh, the system if you see the docker desktop, you can di directly click this button and you can download the exe file okay let me just ping you this in the chat box you can directly click and install this This is for Docker installation for Windows. Okay, and it they have given the system requirements here. What they say Windows uh, 10, 16, uh, 64 bit home or Pro 2004, and this build or higher versions. Okay, enterprise now they have added home editions also. This Docker desktop, what they have improved now, they have in added home edition as well. Try to install the home editions, but what you, you need to do you have to enable some wsl2 backend features in the windows and you can uh, follow okay. this documentation how to enable this microsoft, microsoft okay. search that will be a little difficult and uh, try to troubleshoot and do that one or if you want to do only focus on the practice of the docker then i would suggest don't go for windows installations and uh, for its Linux installations, it will be better and easiest way to install in the Linux environment. Okay. And if you install on your uh, Windows. Okay, so Randito. Yes. I think uh, for this, uh, this is uh, some uh, infrastructure team. No? So no need to consider it on the installation. No? no, no, no. We don't have to uh, see uh, wherever we are working. See, anyway, that if you're working in a small project, if in a company, and where uh, they're starting from the scratch and they may ask you to ah, install yeah, Docker. Yeah. So you have to install mm -hmm. Docker for them also, right? So, but mostly uh, okay. many companies, they have already- It will be ready, but uh, you have to go- Already existing, so use it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, don't worry because uh, it's very simple to install because the companies will be uh -huh. definitely, the companies will be using definitely um, version, enterprise versions, right? For enterprise version, you so. don't have to worry about anything. Just uh -huh. download it and uh, in, double click at it to be installed. It's very simple for Windows Enterprise, Windows Professional, and uh, for Home Edition, it will have little bit difficulties you'll face. Okay. 
Uh, okay. So this is this is what about all about the Windows installations. Okay. So let's see about the uh, Linux and uh, installations. So we'll see how we can install in the Linux environment. So uh, Ranit Bablu is back. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Bablu. Yes. Sorry, I'm a little bit. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Actually, actually yesterday uh, the our uh, original letter released, no? So for that, I think Bablu had some party. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> So what I will do next, uh, please, Linux, so, uh -huh. yeah, I'll show you about the Linux, so I'll forget uh, about this Mark OS, it's not required, even Mark OS also very simple, similarly we'll get one, uh, uh, dot, um, uh, some file for Mac and then you can just double click, it will be installed for you, you don't have to worry anything, it's very simple also. So we'll focus on this Linux installations. Okay, let me quickly just get Linux machines. EC2 machine. Yeah, we'll go for EC2 machine. And this time I'll show you the bare minimum resources I'll take, like our default resources I'll take and try to install it. But when we'll do practice for Kubernetes, we'll mm -hmm. take higher versions of machines. Okay. And even the uh, I know I'm not sure actually for uh, in my MacBook actually Docker and Kubernetes installed, but most of the time I'm getting this fatal error when uh, this things is starting. Okay, I need to uh, troubleshoot this or just uh, uh, reinstall the Docker and Kubernetes in my machine. Uh, not sure why it is getting for few last few days. I'm oh. getting this error. Maybe I updated the operating system and it is not supporting that one. Uh, supporting. Okay. okay. <clears throat> okay, so I am usual. Uh, okay, no, 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 no. Let's let log into this. Root is it? So, Ranjit, mostly uh, in organisms, no? they are using uh, the Linux platform or uh, Windows or. Uh, uh, uh it which depends. It? Both, both actually they have. Uh, uh, oh, both there is. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll show you when we do the project, real time project. Right, at that time I'll show you when actually where you are using this. See, it's very simple. If you are using the applications, .NET related applications, Windows related applications, and the container will have your Windows applications, uh, Windows product will be running. And as the mm -hmm. container is dependent on the hardware and the base operating systems, right? The base container, operating, huh? container only uh, the base host operating system. If your host machine is Windows, then you have to install we the can create Windows. Right. Docker. Huh. If your application hmm. is Linux or Java, uh, if you're talking about Java applications, you can go anywhere. You can just develop it and then you can either run in Windows or Linux because it is platform independent. Linux. So it can run anywhere. Hmm. Similarly. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. But the commands are the same. Whatever we are going to do, we are authentication will because your account has been suspended. Why, why, why? Huh? <laughs> due to the non-payment of yeah. outstanding balance due to payment to it you can now but auto pay na? no 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 auto pay for this account i this is this account was for only 20 purpose no Maybe. you have to enable that mm, uh -huh. okay fine let it be there so i can use another uh, on yeah Okay, I'll, I'll fix this payment issue today. Uh, let me connect. Uh, that is the problem actually. If you are uh, authentication file, because I need to just close this browser. This is a problem. If you are using multiple accounts and multiple email ID, you will be not checking your email ID because they will be sending alerts to the or to my email ID, but I am not using uh, the email ID, right? That's the problem. Uh, correct. Yeah. So, it is better hire one from us, no? so we'll manage all these things. <laughs> 
still you can manage you can without hiring <laughs> also you can manage <laughs> This is taking too much time. There are so many activities you are doing, na? <laughs> it's not allowed. They are uh, farming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I have to use another browser then. And it otherwise uh, uh, because I have the account now, so you can use my account. So my screen maybe the, okay, you cannot control actually. So Randit. I was in mute. Okay. Uh, so in this account, actually, um, I have. To... Uh -huh. Oh, you got okay. No, no, I got it. Uh, here, actually, this this one is running. No, that uh, uh, Randit join and this DevOps class. Mm -hmm. Here. Okay. This is actually hosted here on the server. Uh, wait, yeah, this application is running fine. Yeah, yeah. If I go to here, only one EC2 instances will be mm -hmm. running. If you see, that is running 24 bar 7. So, last few months it is running. Let me see first. It is how, what is the bill amount has come for this account? Or else, bill, bill links, okay. <laughs> links, I have to see it. Uh, 24 7 means uh, definitely till 750 hours, mm. more than 750 hours. Yeah, so it is running for last two months. I think, and no, not this. <laughs> no, instant, no, 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 okay, there is there, and then Actually, have, no, 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 it is there because see. That is the region specific, right? I had selected OYO region. So OYO region, nothing is there. So if I select oh, okay. Mumbai specific, then definitely one Mumbai mm -hmm. instances will be there. Yeah, so it's MBTEC one app server, which is running. So my server name is MBTEC and it is running. If I go to my billing session, let me go to the billing session. So, guys, this is uh, the real time what you have to do also. So, mm -hmm. if I go to my billing section. Wow, great. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> yeah. That's about. So anyway, mm -hmm. only the server is running, right? I'm not using anything else. So, but the thing is, when I started, 
but server running means it will more no no the server, uh, server even for me also no no if you running 360 so that's why i am running only one server and they are giving 365 uh, days free that means you they will not charge anything for one year but if you are you uh, no no for but for, but per month 750 hours na no? it will 24/7 na no? so it will be re reach actually no per day actually per no no per month per day 750 sorry per month 750 hours no no uh -huh. per month suppose 30 into 24 hours 720 yes 720 is 30 days 720 only right oh, okay. they are giving 750 uh -huh. hours then, Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Mm. So that's why there is no charge. Okay, fine. Uh, so our let's go to our main thing. So it's situ if I go. So this instance is running. See the required 30 gb only i have taken if i take more than 30 gb then i have to pay okay so 30 gb up to 30 gb volume they are giving free so i just created one instance with 30 gb volume so that it comes under entirely free tier entirely free tier so the, I, that i don't have to pay anything okay if i take more than 30 gb then i have to pay for monthly Okay, leave it for that. Uh, let's get this public IP and uh, what we'll do here, uh, we'll just try to install our Docker. Okay, and this is, I think, Amazon. This is which machine actually? But we need CentOS, no? Yeah. Down it. Uh, this is, this is, Depends. this is Ubuntu MI. Okay. Ubuntu, Ubuntu. Yeah, this is Ubuntu machines. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see for ubuntu machines okay uh, what i'll do i'll just create one saint os because most of the company will be working on the red hat or saint os machines okay so i'll just quickly create one saint os machines oh yeah. so most of organization uh, saint os right? yeah most of the organization saint os and red hat and few into development phase who are using ubuntu and new startup companies and ah, development, yeah. Yeah, development mm. uh, server they are making only ubuntu but productions and everything will be uh, sent us or red hat okay so i'll go no, it's more secure or what is the not more secure because ubuntu is uh, not you cannot say new to the market but uh sent us and red hat are very old service Service. Yeah, service based ah, the service they probably is more proper when you're using a linux platform so Red Hat uh -huh. had a more set of uh, engineer to provide service in case of the other issue. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that is there. Uh, okay, okay. And, uh, uh, and uh, means travel uh, 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 Yeah, packages and everything you'll get uh, use. Uh, you know, um, the development community will be very strong. So you'll get it good support. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I'll just create a bare minimum things, okay? The default things I'll not changing. I'm not changing anything. So let it default storage eight GB only. I'm not increasing anything. And here I'm just going to give one key here, like uh, name, name, Docker server. I just make this one is Docker server. Now what I can do? uh let's let's create one security group uh i i okay sss http is already there let's select this one mm -hmm. launch it mb tech pin server okay mb tech is already there let's select launch it starts mm -hmm. It will take just few minutes. Just hold on. Uh -huh, yeah.
He did not create a run. running instance. Right? This pen, this pen actually is not coming down. Uh, it has actually two. Okay, go here, click instances. You can see here, right? Instances two only. It displays two, but it's not coming up. Still, yeah, it's now coming up. Yeah, so Docker server. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Still, it was still initializing. Okay. Okay, let's go to there and mm -hmm. I got the public IP. Let's connect to this IP. So here I have, I think, uh, yeah, the tick is there. So I can use SSH, I can I, and the tick, okay. So this is sent away, so the user is sent away, so okay, user is sent away, if you have this. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so we can able to connect, so guys getting lots of background noises, just go to that. Uh, Okay. Yeah, the running noise. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kids are there, man. Yeah. So, okay. Now we can see we have installed this, and I'm not going to update anything because if I update these packages, I think it will be huge and it will take lots of time. So, what I can do instead uh, is just follow the requirement. If you can, if you want to update, you can just do sudo ch um check update or you can directly install it okay so what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy paste this and it's very simple i'm just using curl command to download this docker and execute by using the sh okay so if i just put it here and just hit enter what it will do it will download and uh, what it will do it will just install for that for us also okay just one second okay so it downloaded and installed for us only one command it will do everything okay here we got one warning that is called this docker this is not installed the rpm package is not installed let's see how it works that means we need to update the operating system public key. Uh, no public key is not required we'll see about the public key later okay oh okay so what it says fail to local and uh, okay package docker root already installed and the latest version good so if we see the docker is installed if you can go docker just simply type docker and we'll see yes docker is installed now okay docker is installed now let's see the docker version what versions of docker is installed if i do docker hyphen hyphen version it will show us the version yeah so the latest version 20.10 that is the latest version which is installed so if i do here docker only version not hyphen hyphen version it gives little details here okay and uh, what if here and in noise <laughs> and what is uh, here the versions api versions co uh, these versions and uh, and what it says in the last it says can it connect to the docker daemon Guys, you'll face uh, this kind of errors and this kind of issues you'll face all this time, and you try to understand what is this. Okay, what it says: uh -huh. this socket is running or not? Is the Docker daemon running? So what happened? We just installed the Docker, but we did not start the Docker. Okay, so to, to start the Docker, simple Unix commands we have to just use sudo system control. We have to use to start the Docker. Okay, so what? Yeah. Have sudo yeah, yeah. system ctl okay 
linear theory as uh, you told na demon will be running yeah demon so this is the demon na exactly so we are going to start the docker uh -huh. demon right now started so if i do docker now docker version you'll see see uh okay so first we have to make ourselves sudo actually to get everything run perfectly sudo su if i do docker version see now what do we get we get the docker client as well as the docker daemon see the server which is the docker daemon this is the docker daemon and this is the client this is the client client and server so this is as i told this is this works as a client server architecture okay so we'll have client and server by default it will be there so now we see we have the latest version of docker installed guys there is very simple commands are there in dockers if i do docker help it will give us the commands what is being used for docker see i'll just tell you how to use the commands how to use the docker commands okay so oh, yeah that is very important to understand the docker helps what it gives first thing you see it gives the options just leave this one this is not required now and this versions what we are going to see the management commands these are the management commands and these are the sub commands which is available for these commands suppose we'll think about see this app docker app scan these are the new whatever the stars you can see here right these are the newly added commands in the docker few months before this uh, last one or two months before it was not it was not there okay it is not there hmm. Ranjit, uh, we lost your audio or uh, unmute? Unmute. Okay. So what happens? Uh, if you want to see the uh -huh. more details about this container management command, what you have to do? Just copy. This, uh, just see this one and type Docker container. Okay. And hyphen hyphen help hyphen hyphen help. So it will give you the usage of the docker container command docker container and guys see these are the commands which you may to use in this docker container commands these are the so you'll be thinking right you are uh, i was telling like there are few commands you have to remember but here there are lots of commands are there but if you really see what these commands were it's very very simple because if you already have worked in the linux and unix environment you'll understand easily start stop update pause wait kill log these are the simple things right there are not much only few things which is prone okay port and inspect export exit these are the commands which you will work like hardly four or five which you need to remember and the rest of the things is, are very simple to remember because you are going to use very frequently okay and one more thing i'll say mm -hmm. uh, say you guys yeah, yeah. actually every time this docker community development community actually trying to update and update new commands and they're trying to make it easy to use for the people right for the developer or for the customer so you have to always use their documentations and to follow their documentations, you can just use docs.docker.com go guides this one, or you can just find using docker hyphen hyphen health, you'll find all the command informations if they newly added anything. Okay. So the first thing what we saw how to install and how to work around the commands, but still we have not executed a single command. Okay, let's see. 
the first and first most basic commands actually there is called to see the images okay so to see the images we can use docker there are i'll show you in both old ways as well as the new ways of executing the commands in the old ways if i go for docker images if i do only docker images what will show it will give me the image details what are the images available so what is image guys in last class we discussed right what is image yeah image uh, it's our uh, uh, and so, uh, binary na? so binary with other dependencies we are creating yeah so what is the definitions that whatever you told that's the correct what image contains but uh, what is the definition what is the meaning of the image what it contains actually image. Image means we are just creating a copy of a means. Uh, mm, uh, maybe uh, 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 means totally. Uh, you are you are creating a copy of a demo server where all applications are hosted. Means you, what you are doing? You are creating a particular server-like structure where you have all those components that is going to run on that particular instance itself. No, okay. That's a you are making it complicated and making it very uh, <laughs> large way. But just in a simple way, the image actually a set of instructions of a template, which holds the instructions to run a container. That is what the Docker image meaning. And whatever the image, you don't compare this image with the operating OS image or any file system image or any snapshot image no don't compare that this is a different oh, okay, okay this is simple a mm -hmm. set of instructions or template is being written and whatever you need for the applications to run or the container to run okay so as i told we have we can have our inbuilt uh, we can have our, our own image or we can get the inbuilt command from the docker hub registry okay now there is one more command before moving to docker image and container i want to show you that is called docker info docker info okay docker info to get more details and informations about the docker installed in your app in your system so if you do docker info or docker version same things but if you do docker info it will give you more details so lots uh, what are the contain containers running how many containers running how many images available in your server okay and everything it will display in details what is the cpu one core cpu what is the architecture operating system type okay the kernel versions and uh, everything and where the root directory of the docker so guys remember this command will be useful while troubleshooting any docker related issues okay docker info it's a very simple right uh -huh. docker, yeah. informations. docker info type it and you'll get more details uh -huh. okay now let's talk about the images and uh, see whatever i'll discuss everything will be uh, uh, you'll get questions from that okay so i'll just uh, give you the real time uh, details okay now so i don't have any so if i do docker images i don't have any image available this is the old way to check the image now let's check the new way what is the new way so if I do Docker image, not images, image ls. This is a new way of handling and managing the images. See? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, same thing yeah. actually giving. And if you want to see because this image is a management command now, and this ls is a subcommand. Okay. Now if you want to know more commands about the image, just do Docker image hyphen hyphen help see so there are very few commands related to image i can use docker image and then command so what i use i use ls to list the images and there are few more commands are there and we'll uh -huh. see in uh, going forward and uh, we'll see how to use this one okay now let's clear this the first thing what i'm going to show you let's create a container our a first container will i'll show you our apache container which is the best way to 
demonstrate and it's a very simplest way to create it we'll start from uh -huh. simple and we'll go to intermediate or export level okay so what i need to first download an image so to get that what i have to do use i can use docker pool okay and the image name so for apache what is how to find what is the image name what we have to do guys we have to just go for hop dot docker dot docker hub so we have to log in as i told uh, last class i had told you to create all account in docker hub right hope you guys created account okay so yeah yeah, yeah. i created that's great so i am not yeah, yeah. In now <laughs> So I'll show you. I have also few images in my account, but let me sign in first. Uh, I forgot my password. So, Docker ID. Okay, guys, I am just stopping my screen, sir. I have to get my user ID password. Ha <laughs> ha, uh -huh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I got my user ID and password. So it is Docker for and password. Let's see. Good. So, and now I'm able to log into my Docker account. Okay. So you can see here, I have lots of images here. I have lots of created images uh, year, two years ago, one year ago, six months ago, few months ago, I have created lots of images and put it here, right? So how like you recommend Docker how? Now let's do search one image, okay? So for Apache image, I can search for Apache here. Apache and as soon as search for Apache, you'll find one image name that is called HTTPD. This is the official image. I told you you can use the official and genuine image from Docker Hub registry to create your and uh, host create a container, or you can write your own image file to create a container also. Okay, to create an image by using one Docker file. I'll show you in our next upcoming classes how to create your own images, but so far we'll just work on the inbuilt images. Okay, so just click on this image, you'll get more details about the image. I'll just explain you how to play around all these images. And here you can see the simple commands like Docker pool HTTPD, what I was just going to show you Docker pool HTTPD. I just I'm just showing you how to know which image will be required for you. I know HTTPD is the image, but how you will know the HTTPD name will be the image name for the Apache server. Okay. That uh, official official image. Okay. So you have to just copy this and put it into the just simple command. Same commands will be used in Windows environment as well as in the Linux environment. Why? Linux. Yeah, Linux environment. Why, guys? Because this Docker is really working on a linux platform okay even though you install in windows the docker engine whatever will be installed that will create a linux platform for windows and on top of that docker will be installed that is the architecture behind the scene we don't have to go on depth how this docker is running but that is the thing that is why whatever the commands you execute everything will be unix and linux related commands and that will be supported in the windows platform because the windows whatever docker is there it is running on the linux platform behind because the docker engine creates the 
simulator kind of Linux environment for Docker to run. Okay. Now, yeah, yeah. Let's come to this image, and if you see here the image, the descriptions about the image, and you'll find lots of tags. Which versions you are going to use? You can just go and select it here, and then go ahead. Also, you will find what more details about the HTTPD. What is HTTPD? And how to use and how, what is the docker file see this is the docker file of the image and how to create image or uh, all these informations are there all this information so when you are using any image file you have to just come here and come the uh, description page and find more details about the image okay and we'll just come to know all about these commands once we move forward and go to the advanced level okay i'm not going to show you all this because you will not understand until unless we do the class okay now let me show you the tags basic basic answer yeah let me show you the tags here so if you think about this tag which versions of httpd server you are going to get it that you can select it here i'll show you how you can do that and remember guys if you just copy this go here and just simply paste it here oops it's broken okay yeah so if you just paste it here what will happen it will just download the image to my local machine okay to my machine docker server so but the the thing is if i do hit enter here okay what is this got permission written that is expected so we have to make ourselves as a root user okay should have yeah now let's paste it yeah docker pool httpd remember guys there will be a question if you do without any versions here it will download the latest version if you don't mm -hmm. specify a tag if you don't specify a version here it will download the latest version okay let's hit enter what it does it will just pulling default tag image you see mm -hmm. it is downloading the latest version it says the latest version httpd colon latest now if i see what are the images available in my systems just do docker image ls see now i got the image httpd the tag is latest image id created six days ago size is 138 mb so guys you'll be seeing like uh, it is created six days ago we downloaded just now but uh -huh. it's created six days ago. Uh -huh. so this creation is the creation of the, the latest UK. version yeah latest version That's latest version uh, of this okay, okay now if uh, mm -hmm. so what i'm going to do suppose i'm going to get one older versions suppose i want to get uh, this 2.4 alpine versions so if you, if you want to get this 2.4 alpine version what you have to do here the docker commands is given just copy this one go here and try to pull this Okay, now what happened? If I do Docker image ls, okay, now you can see here this HTTPD, the first one which we so actually, the tag is actually latest tag. And here the tag name is 2.4 alpine tag. The image ID are different. Also created two weeks ago. And the size also very minimum is 54.8 MB, which is half of the, more, even uh, not even half, it's very less than the latest version. So you'll be thinking why, why it is less. Can, can anybody tell why it is less and why it is more this image by no, the maybe the, it is a part of 
means uh, yes, some basic feature may be alpha in related hmm. extra add on that is raw httpd and this alpha in version may have some add ons that's where the size is more okay so the the alpine version actually is the latest light version of the httpd which have the basic functionality of the http and does not have more libraries as binary symbol that's why it has the uh -huh. size as less, less size but the latest will have the latest versions and everything whatever you want everything will be available in this latest version now mm -hmm. what we did here we just i showed you how to pull the image okay how to pull the image and run it now how to create a container out of that image that is the main point how to create a container out of the image so what i have to do simple things we are going to use that's called docker container okay Type and have help. So that's a command is actually called run. But I'll show you how to find it out. Help. And you can just go here and you'll find the run command to run a command in a new container. So once you use this run to create a new container, if you are going to create a container, you have to use the run command to create the container. Okay. Now what I'm going to use Docker container before what it was there no container management command was there it was simple docker run it was easy to remember docker run but now they are adding docker and one management command called docker container then run okay then the image name so i'll use httpd so if i use httpd then what will happen It will take the yeah, uh, image. It will uh, that image. Uh -huh. Yeah, it will take the latest version of the image. Then, if you uh -huh, add, yeah. I want to use the alpine version of the image, the tag I need to inst uh, add like colon two point four uh -huh. uh -huh. alpine. I think this is the image. Okay, two point four alpine. Uh -huh. but suppose let me okay. Uh, let me do the latest version. So I'm just if you want to the latest again, you can type the latest here also. That will do the latest version if i don't do want anything even if i do sttpd only it will get the latest latest version okay. latest one so let's hit enter okay now what happens here we just ran the command but the command is running on the foreground see the container is now running on the foreground if you want to run the command if you want to run the container in the background what you have to do if i just use control c it will be exited so now it, it, will, killed, yeah. it will be killed so let's see if i do docker container ls it will show me the list of the containers right but nothing is there whatever we saw we had one container created we just exited the container but the container is no more here how that is another sub command oh, because, uh, so see this actually, I tell you, this docker container ls is giving only the running container informations what are the content containers are running that information will give you suppose if you want to get the container which is already which is stopped and which are running both including stopped and running container then you have to just give hyphen a that means list everything okay hyphen a oh, oh, okay. Yeah. now what see one of the container is there we can see one container okay uh, now i think uh, this uh, okay let me just exit this
So if I use Docker, Docker container container ls hyphen a. So what it gives? Let me just explain about about this container. We'll first see the container ID. Next, see the image. What the image? Which image is being used? So if you see HTTPD means you'll by default understand this is the latest version of HTTPD being used and the command. So what is the command is running? So we see we had just executed this command created two minutes ago. This is the creation of the container two minutes ago status. It's running or exited. It's now exited and the ports is nothing we had mentioned. So no ports are there and the names we did not specify a name. So this is very interesting guys. It got a default name called laughing saw. It is randomly gave one name to the container. If you don't specify a name to the container that then it will give a random name to the container. Okay. Now okay. whatever we saw the command we executed actually was in the foreground. Let me execute this in the background. So what I have to use I have to use docker let me just use run command not container Conte remember guys the new way is to running container if container is typing is taking too much time so i'm ignoring container now using docker run hyphen mm -hmm. so in detached mode i'm going to run the container hyphen d mm -hmm. and then what i'm going to use i'm going to use a question yeah and then i'm going to suppose give a name to the container okay so I can uh -huh. yeah, name, to the name. Okay. Suppose uh, I can so just give it Apache. What I'm going to give them the image name. Suppose image is HTTPD, the latest one. Okay. Mm. Then hit enter. Mm. See what it uh -huh. gave. It gave gave us one container ID, but nothing is there and it came to the background mode it now it is in detached mode so if i do docker ls what it will show sorry that's a container ls. docker container ls. ls see it gives only one container and it is status is off and running 32 seconds ago and the port is 80 tcp and the name of the container i gave as apache it is the name which we gave right apache yeah. so but guys you'll see here only one container running but uh, in one container we have in our machine but it's not one container if i do ls a we'll have two containers see one container which mm -hmm. is running now and the other one which is already existed and has a different name now i want to terminate and delete this container so what i have to do i have to just use docker container rs or uh, sorry rm or you can use docker rm okay and then container id then suppose this is the container id and this either you can use the container name or the container id simply give the container <laughs> id so what right. i do is not it is now deleted okay if i do container ls hyphen la see we have only one container only one. One. now the thing is how to access this container our container is running right how to access this container that is the what because this container what it, what this container is having okay. guys now what is this container is having apache server exactly this container is now happy mm -hmm. having our apache server this container holds the application server apache application server mm -hmm. and we have the application hosted in that container now how to access that container means how to access the application running inside the container that's our 
meant motor to achieve right so mm -hmm. how to find it out that so the thing is what I, we need to know first thing is we have the ATCP okay and uh, without the container host port we cannot connect to the container so here whatever the port information is giving it this is the port information of the container this is the container port okay but i want to use the port for host port because i need to publish the container port to the outside so that from outside we can able to access the port access the container now to do that what i have to do let me first stop this container and create a new one we cannot modify or create this container what we have to do instead we have to stop or remove this container and create another container out of that okay now uh, let me remove this container so what is the command i can use docker container rm or only rm container rm or only rm the name of the or container id now let's hit enter good this is what i was going to show you so what it says error response from the daemon you cannot remove a running container you may get a question running running. can you remove a running container no so what we can do instead no, we can no. first stop the container stop it and then remove it or else we can directly forcefully kill it forcefully remove it so first thing is we can just use docker stop and the container id to stop it or what we can use we can use docker rm hyphen f that is forcefully removing the container just give the container okay. id or just type the container name apache hit enter so if i do docker ls hyphen a you'll find nothing is there because everything is now deleted now deleted. i'm going to show you how to access the container by publishing the container port to the host port the same command i'm going to execute but this time i'm going to publish the host port this time i'm going to publish the host port so how to publish the host port you have to just type hyphen p to publish the host port the container port this will be hyphen 80 will be your host port and this 80 will be your container port okay now i'm publishing this container port remember the right hand side will be your container port and this left hand side will be your host port okay so now i'm going to publish the container port to the host port okay now hit enter now our, our container is created now if i do docker ls hyphen a sorry okay now they have removed ls i think so we have to use earlier it was working in docker ls hyphen a but now it is not working okay now what i can do docker container container ls hyphen a oh, sorry Docker container ls hyphen a. So you can see, guys, new container created 30 seconds ago, and you can see here little difference, right? The ports. It is now the container port is now forwarded to the host port. See. Okay. Then how we can access this? Simply go the go to the server you can get it the public ip the server name the host name okay and uh, just come here press it here hit enter see it works okay mm -hmm. this is what today what we saw we saw about the container how to create the get the image and how to work on the container so now i suppose i want to modify this so what i can do it 
simply there is a very good command that is called exec if i go to see here docker that is called exec command to go inside a container running container how to go inside a running container that is very important to understand suppose i am going to see docker container and hyphen hyphen help we can see here exec what it says run a command in a running container okay so let me go inside a container now now i am in my docker server or my laptop or my application on my uh, server itself i want to go inside the container mm -hmm. to go inside the container first mm -hmm. we need to understand what container is running container ms ls okay now i can got this container id or container name that's fine so what you have to type docker container exec okay hyphen it that means interactively we are attaching to the container interact this is interactive mode hyphen it and then the container id or the container name and then we have to provide one command to work bin bus okay remember this way you have to connect to the container bin bus hit enter now we can see here i just connected to the container this is the container id earlier i was on my server now i connected server, yeah, entered yeah. inside the container now this is the container and i came to the default directory of the container i'll show you this is called working directory and i'll show you when we'll work on this docker file and creating our own image that time i'll show you this working directory concept and everything okay now if i go to this apache folder and do ls hyphen l here and we'll find one include sorry st docs directory okay so i'll go this st docs directory and here one index.html file is there one index.html file is there so i need to modify this file if i do vi index i think vi will not be there okay so vi command is not there in the container to execute it so in what i can use i can use nano command nano index.html so nano also it's not there okay now i cannot modify now let's discuss about another command which we can modify outside of the container and copy to the inside container so how we can do that let's come out from this exit just do exit if you type exit will come out from the container oh. now i came to my centos machine let me create one index file outside html index.html i'm going to deploy my application now i'll show you how to deploy it let's create some ah, okay. format html html now i am just going to so ranjit maybe another uh, five minutes will wind up yeah yeah, yeah. another this command i uh, will see this command and uh, uh ha, ha, yeah then we'll move out okay okay yeah. Okay. Now, so the, the there will be questions uh, you will get in the interview how to copy a file to a running container. How to copy a file to inside a container. First thing, the container should run to copy a file. If the container is not running, then you cannot copy the file to the container. First thing is to run, the container should run. So what is the command then? That is a command called cp, normal Linux cp command. You have to type docker container cp to copy the file right now uh, mm -hmm. if you want to know that you can use docker container help uh, while you are practicing but i just going to use i'm just going to use this one so docker docker container cp okay 
So what I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy this index.html file, right? Uh -huh. uh, just a second, one second. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay, no worries, it's disconnected. <clears throat> okay, so Docker container CP index, then we have to provide the container ID. This is the container ID. Yeah. Container ID. Yeah, where to go? Yeah, where to go? Then we have to provide the path. This is the path. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Inside the container. Right. Hit enter. Ah. Now I copied the index.html. If I go here and refresh this container, I deployed I showed you how to deploy in the container. So the container is running. I did not do anything. Simply copied one project file to the container application. That's all. It is now running. So now today what we learn today we learned how to install the Docker and we saw about the monolithic and the microservices architecture. We discussed about we installed Docker. We discussed about the images. We discussed about the Docker run command. We discussed about Docker exit command how to enter inside the docker and then we discussed about uh -huh. copy a file to a docker uh, Yeah, so in our next class we'll uh, go beyond that and we'll discuss more commands and more uh, with uh, real-time work What you're going to do and then we'll see how to create our own image file. We don't have to dependent on the docker. image file huh? okay. we'll uh, uh -huh. and how, I'll see how to write your uh -huh. own image that I'll show you okay okay guys that's mm -hmm. all for today i hope there will be no questions i think it's very straightforward and everything is clear so we can discuss further in our next class on thursday okay